Hey there. Question to you: Have you ever had problems with system upgrades? Well, if you have the job of managing systems, the answer might be likely yes, right? And more than just that, if we talk about organizations with applications deployed at a global scale, there are a number of things that we need to take into consideration, like downtime and configuration drift. Well, Kubernetes clusters are no different. Moving clusters to a newer version can be a little painful indeed, unless you have a good plan for it. Red Hat OpenShift clusters use Red Hat CoreOS by default, which allows OpenShift to have more control over the services, the nodes, and the operating system itself. Because of this, you can perform very simple and highly automated upgrades at the click of a button. However, when you have multiple clusters, you might need some tooling in place. Red Hat ACM can help you make a consistent plan and execute multiple OpenShift upgrades at a time. To do this, we'll use ACM policies and the TALM operator. Let me present you to my colleague Brian Jarvis, who gives us a deeper explanation on the two as well as demonstrate it live, right? So Brian, please, the floor is yours. Today, we're going to be looking at using Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management governance policies to upgrade OpenShift clusters. This will allow us to control what upgrades are performed and where they're performed, and use a GitOps-based approach to managing it. First, let's look at our ACM hub. Now, I like to set up my cluster sets by environment. This allows me to group all clusters in one environment together and perform policies at the environment level. It also allows using labels on the managed cluster to further refine selection of individual clusters for policies within there. So here we have a QA clusters and prod clusters. And if we look at our clusters, we have one QA and one prod cluster that we'll be upgrading today. Now the upgrade can be done in two ways. You can use individual policies or you can use the Topology Aware Lifecycle Manager. And we'll look at both of those today. This practice would allow you to do multiple clusters. If you have a large string of clusters, depending upon your environment, your requirements, maybe you just want to use a policy directly and say, I can upgrade all my QA clusters at once. And just a policy would, allow, would be theoretically allow you to do that and manage it. If you have a larger number of clusters, the Talm resources would let you control subsets of clusters when they're upgraded. It will let you do sets of clusters at a time with dependencies between them. So you could kick off five clusters at once. When those all complete, it would then perform the upgrade on the next set of five and so forth. So we'll look at that. In order to place our cluster, we'll create a placement listing our cluster set as where we're targeted. And since these upgrades can only be done on OpenShift, we will have a label selector to ensure it's only OpenShift we apply to. Now, to properly upgrade from our current 4.12 to 4.13, we do have to acknowledge the deprecated APIs that come with each release. And here we show how to do that for both 4.11 to 4.12 and 4.12 to 4.13. You just create a simple config map. In the OpenShift config namespace, this is required to be created whether you are upgrading through a policy or you're using the UI through OpenShift or ACM itself. Additionally, to specify the, the upgrade and what we're doing, we're going to modify the cluster version object as part of our policy. We'll set the channel that we want to go to, and then we're going to set the version. Now we're also going to set the upstream to determine which is the proper image to get for this release that we want to upgrade to. When you use the UI, it would normally give you the image with a SHA value. By specifying the upstream, we don't have to provide an image and to ensure that previous upgrades done with the UI don't impact our upgrade today, we're going to put an empty string there. We've also included a status with uh, histories with a state of completed. This ensures our policy will stay in a non-compliant state until the upgrade completes, allowing us to verify that it's completed and everything's healthy ahead of time. Now we're gonna use a policy generator to generate our policy today. And this allows us to simplify our management. We only need to manage the cluster version and the config map directly and let the generator figure out the policy for us. So we're gonna have two policies actually. 
and we'll create one for the deprecated API, and we'll also create one for the upgrade. The reason why we want to do two is so that we can have a dependency between these two to ensure that the config map gets created and is on the cl managed cluster before we try to perform the upgrade. And each of those will get included in our policy set that we're going to define. And you see, we already have the placement. By specifying a placement name, this allows us to reuse an existing placement already on the cluster and not have to generate one each time we run. If we go and run the generator, we'll see it creates our policy set, which includes both policies. It also will create the policies and we can see the proper dependency information gets created as well. And then there's the second policy along with the placement binding that we need is also created. Okay, so let's apply this to our cluster so you can see what happens. Now let's just do an OC apply. Okay, so you can see we created a placement binding, the two policies, the policy set. And if we look at our running cluster, we will see those policies and we see the first one has been successfully created. And the, OC, the upgrade itself is now in a non-compliant state. And this is how it will remain until the cluster is upgraded. We see it's only upgrading Q81 based on our cluster set. And if we go look at that cluster, we will see that begins upgrading. It takes a little bit of time for the UI here to recognize that change. And now you see the UI is representing that it is in fact upgrading as well. Now let's look at the requirements to use the Topology Aware Lifecycle Manager. And what you'll see is policy-wise, it requires the exact same changes be made. There's two distinct differences. One being that the remediation action on the upgrade is in form. When you run Tom, it will copy the policy and set it to an enforced status that will then apply it to the cluster. The other object you have to create is the cluster group upgrade. The cluster group upgrade will take the list of clusters you give it, whether you do it through a specific named list or you use cluster label selectors. There's various options to coming up with the list and it will apply the policies in the order that you tell it. You can specify uh, different options, such as how many clusters can upgrade at once, and you can do dependencies between the cluster group upgrades. So you could specify, let's say five clusters get upgraded, maybe do two at a time. When those are completed, it would move through that list of five, and then it would go to the next dependent cluster group upgrade. So you could, as you scale out, control how cluster upgrades happen and automate doing them in different sets. One final note on the cluster group upgrade, we set enable to false. This allows us to review the created object, cluster selected, and what policies and verify everything before executing. Once this is turned to true, the object is considered immutable. We can no longer make changes and the upgrade will commence. You can use this setting to pre-stage everything, have it ready to go. And as part of your maintenance window, just simply flip this to true which would kick off your upgrades or upgrade processes if you're doing multiple clusters and dependencies between those upgrades. So let's go ahead and create those objects. I'm gonna create them now. Okay, and we see it created the same placement binding and policies placement set, but and now we've included the cluster group upgrade. Let's go back and look at our cluster and now we see we have an additional OpenShift upgrade for the prod policy set, which includes both prod clusters and, and is set to inform. We also have a duplicate of that policy that we will see here, which is set to enforce. And you notice there is no selection because we have not enabled the upgrade to happen yet. So let's take a quick look at that cluster group upgrade, and then we will come back to seeing that in action. So let's select our object here and scroll down so we can see the clusters that we put in our list match in the status the clusters that are expected to be upgraded. When this is completed, the upgrade, we'll see the list of clusters. So if we had a list of that were going to be done, not just one, we could watch the status to see each one getting upgraded and completed. So we can follow which policies get applied, the order they get applied by watching this object as well. So let's enable this and save it. And we'll go back to 
the ACM interface, we can see the policy. And now we see this policy is pointing at our Prod1 cluster and going to begin that upgrade. And once again, as with QA, it will take a minute for Prod1 to begin showing its upgrading. And again, let's go look at this cluster to ensure that the upgrade has started. As we see, the cluster is marked itself as upgrading and that upgrade will continue through. These upgrades will take about an hour to complete. When they complete, the policies will become compliant and the policy created by the Talm operator will be deleted. This concludes our video today, looking at how to upgrade clusters using policies with Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management. I hope you found this useful and thank you for joining us.